His mother called him Wild Thing, and Max said, I'll eat you up. Cannibalism is cool. This week I talk to my fellow geeks, discuss my favorite children's book, and then get to a comic book reviews. I'm Mario, this is Thursday on Geeks of the Week, and now on to the video. Steph was MIA this week because apparently she went to go find Tom Hiddleston, the actor who played Loki, and just peeked through his window. She just wanted a quick peek. Apparently she asked his theory that he walks around in his Loki costume. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to go bail her out too. Coolio Vitz announced this week that he's going to go to a Dallas Comic Con and get to meet Stan Lee. I was once arm's length within the man. It was like seeing a mythical creature in person like bleep and bleep that's a dragon. Bleep and bleep that's Stan freaking Lee. So have fun dude. Nikki announced this week or last week that her, Steph, and Luluko will be going to Fanime. That's almost the entirety of the Geeks of the Week assembled and I feel kind of left out. So I want you guys to get a Ouija board and conjure me up using the dark arts. My essence will leave my corporeal body and I will be there spiritually. So you do that and have fun. And now that I've talked to my fellow geeks, I am going to get to the other portion of my video which is talking about the passing of um, Maurice Sellet. The Avenger movie last week eclipsed everything and I'm kind of upset at myself that I didn't mention in my last video the passing of the children's writer Maurice Selleck. He is the writer of Where the Wild Things Are. It was one of the first books I actually connected to as a child and probably one of the first times I was not the most normal of kids but um, I love this book and sometimes I collect comics based on the cover alone and one of my favorite covers is this. I just I saw it and I kind of laughed and chuckled I'm like I gotta get it it's kind of I really like it. it's cool. So um uh, recently, Marie Selleck did an interview on the Colbert Report. It was very funny, um, satirical, it was just great. I suggest anybody to go see it. I'll probably find a link and post it. It made me even a bigger fan of the man, and I'm gonna miss him even more now. It, Like I said, um, it's a classic, it still holds up today. Um, you guys should read it to your children. It's a, if not, you should just reread it. I reread it and it was great. So. I'm going to miss the man and I'm going to pour out some nerds for the Fallen. We're going to miss you Maurice. And now I'm going to get to the comics. At the end of the Avengers movie they reveal who the next villain will be. So if you haven't seen it feel free to fast forward this part of the video. Don't, don't leave the video that'd be rude you guys are already here just fast forward this part of the video. So here comes the spoiler, you guys were warned, it's going to be Thanos. For those of you who know who he is, probably like me, probably thought, holy damn. For those of you guys who don't know who he is, he is this friendly fellow right here. Here's some things you should know about him. He is known as the Mad Titan. He's a nihilist, genocidal madman, and those are some of his good qualities. He's extremely strong, extremely intelligent, extremely dangerous. So you guys can get a better understanding of who he is, I am recommending Silver Surfer, Rebirth of Thanos, written by Jim Starling and art by Ron Lim. And in this art and in this collection, Thanos has been dead for a while, when the personification of death has decided to bring him back because she feels that the entire universe is too overpopulated and wants to cut the population by half and is bringing back Thanos to do this job. Thanos wants to do this because he loves death. He has a mad, mad, mad crush on her. He's obsessed with her. So Silver Surfer is trying to stop him. The second part of this arc is Thanos is still trying to reach his goal of calling the universe in half. It, so he decides to collect the six infinity gems. Each half a different power. It's mind, power, reality, soul, space, and time. And when you combine these six gems, they have the power to reshape the entire the entirety of existence. So not good for a madman to collect them. You get a real understanding of who Thanos is in this book. You see his reasoning. The scary part was when I started to agree with him. That kind of creeped me out. Starling is a master of building this character. His writing is so eloquent. The artwork is beautiful. The different look for each world is just a visual treat. This is a classic. Unfortunately, it's become kind of difficult to get online since it's out of print. I would hit up your local comic book shops or libraries see if they still have a copy. If you find one reasonably priced, 
absolutely get it right away. Uh, you won't regret it. I recommend it um, highly. Hopefully, as Avengers 2 starts to come out, they will re-release it. If they do, I will let you guys know. I'll keep checking in. And yeah, I ultimately, I am rating this 5 stars. It is, as I said, a classic. Um, and yeah. Also, while I'm at it, um, hopefully I'll be able to, to review this one more fully next week. Also pick up Anthony Gauntlet by the same team, Jim Starling and Ron Lim. It's... Um, just a, an amazing book you it's the follow-up to rebirth of thanos but you wouldn't have had to read this to understand this book easy to follow um just amazing and i the reason i'm saying pick it up now is because it's still available online at a reasonable price it's so you guys should absolutely um get it to to get a better understanding of who thanos is it's um i might as well spoil it it's also five stars it's another classic and just uh, a great book so those are my recommendations for Thanos. It's time for a comic book rapid fire so I'm going to discuss these fast. The first one is Action Comics issue 9 written by Grant Morrison and art by Jeannie Ha and this is about a Superman of Parallel Earth 23. He's an African American. His alter ego's name is Calvin Harris and in this issue he discovers that there's other Parallel Earths and he has to fight the living embodiment of the idea of a Superman. So let me summarize my thoughts on this issue just simply by saying yes. Grant Moore is saying yes, that is how you write. He does more in this one issue than he did in half his last arc, which I was not a big fan. I'm already right away interested by this new cool um, version of Superman and the other heroes. I'm very hopeful for the start of this arc. I would absolutely pick it up. I rate this four and a half stars. So moving on to Avengers vs. X-Men issue 1, the Versus series. This happens, oh, written by Jason Aaron and art by Andy Kubert. This happens in issue 2 of the regular book between panels. This is basically just an extended view of a fight. So here is Iron Man vs. Magneto and Submariner vs. The Thing. It's a fun book. It's enjoyable. It's cool action. It does not advance the plot at all. Not at all. So because of that, I really can't justify the $3.99 price tag. I do not recommend it. You should pick it up only if you want to splurge. I rate this 3.5 stars. I had to knock it down half a star because of the price and the fact that it doesn't advance the plot at all. I'm sorry. Um, the next one is Dial H, issue 1, written by China Mayville and art by Matu Santunu. And in this issue, it's about Nelson, who is a sad sack. His life is pathetic. He has he's out of shape, no job. His wife left him. His dog left him. Just a really sad man. When one of his friends, one of his only remaining friends, is being attacked, he tries to go and save him, and he really can't. So he tries to call up for help on the payphone. And yes, they make a joke that there's still payphones. Anyways, he's dialing numbers and becomes a hero. It's the book is about this device, the payphone which when you dial H-E-R-O, you become a superhero. A any common person can dial it and they will become one. And each time you dial it, you become a different hero. Dial H has always been a great series in the past. They always do these short arcs with um, different people discovering this device and becoming the heroes. So I'm really looking forward to see where this goes. It's uh, an interesting book, it's very cool. I rate this four stars and it's new reader friendly. Finally, I will be reviewing Secret, Issue 1, written by Hickman and art by Bohemian. It's corporate espionage. It's a book where the character Robert, Robert Dunn has been kidnapped and tortured to get his password for his company. And he's hiring Grant Miller, who is a security specialist and is very selective on his clientele. The plot is very intriguing and the dialogue is sharp. I'm right away interested to see what happens next. It's very cool, also new reader friendly since it's a new series and you don't need any backstory about it. So I ultimately am rating this 4 stars and I, I would pick it up and yeah. So that was comic book rapid fire, hopefully I got through them all and you guys enjoyed it. Okay my video is running way too long, I gotta wrap this up fast. That's it for me this week guys, comment, subscribe, check out the other more awesome keys of the week. As always let me know what you think of my reviews, agree, disagree, I always like a li lively debate. So I gotta go, I will be back next week for sure and um, that's it, I'm done. Waste not, want not.